Right, so, hey guys, welcome to the very, the very last session on the surgeries. There's the last one, unfortunately. Uh, hopefully, I will not see you again next year. I don't want to, because hopefully you'll be at medical school, but if you ever see me on campus, feel free to say hi. No matter what happens, guys, I'm so proud of all of you. So, well done for coming this far and for taking your Sunday to come here. Yeah, I would say that that just shows how motivated you are to get in. So, well done to all of you. Okay, so uh, I'll just speed run through this. For those who don't know me already, my name is Martin Pereira. Uh, here's, here's my email and my website. So, I got 6.895A in the VAT. Yes, I'm a try hard, it happens. I took quite a few A levels, you can see, so I took three sciences, two maths, and three languages. So if you're curious about the languages, it was Russian, Spanish, and Portuguese. So yeah, uh, I'm an education consultant. So what that means is I'm one of around 50 registered education consultants in the UK. So we're a lot more specialized than your average tutor because, well, um, with tutors, they're essentially like they try to get. Um, you know, a few additional income here and there from teaching. Education consultants make literally helping people to get into universities a whole career. So yeah, I'm one of the 50 people registered in the UK independent consultants in the IACAC, which is the International Association of Colleges and Counseling. I've worked with Jesus College, University of Oxford. So you might, you might have seen me with Dr. Matthew Williams in the webinar. Hopefully you might see more of me in those webinars. Uh, if you are quite early and you're in year 12, you might see me in summer school because I might help running your summer school as well, but all uh, in the air right now. I help students to get into top unis all across the world, not just the UK, but medicine and BMATs are my favorite areas, along with also the ACT and SAT for the America. But anyway, um, so yeah, that is pretty much all that I have to talk about. No more flexing, I promise. So. I also own a community. So this is started as a hobby uh, two, three years ago, where essentially we had students, uh, me and my, fr my friends and I essentially, we just started this forum on Reddit, which is called r forward slash BMATS exam. It's not BMATS, it's BMATS exam. If you put just BMATS, you'll go elsewhere, elsewhere, because someone tries to still traffic from us. But yeah, so it's r BMATS exam. So we're, we are a free community used by over one in two BMAT candidates. Fun fact, Cambridge Assessment also visits our forum because we refuse a few requests from them to take some content down sometimes. So that's when we know that, yeah, your community is quite large. Uh, as you can see, as of the 9th of October, we have received 16,000 PGs from 1,327 students. Last month, we received 3.3K students. On top of that, we received 1.1K the month before that. So, yeah. Um, on the test dates, I expect it to go to about four to five thousand. So yeah, we've probably received about ten thousand unique um, visitors by the end of the, you know, the testing season. We so far we've received about twenty one thousand unique students visiting our forum. So yeah, quite a lot of people to to be there. So I recommend that you go there because we have a whole moderating team which is composed of medical students at different universities, BMAT universities. Uh, we have one someone from KCL, but he also did the BMATs, so we just allowed them to get in. It's always good because BMAT applicants also like KCL and Edinburgh and Bristol for some reason. You and your rankings, guys. You and your rankings. But yeah, uh, most of the questions that you asked me today can be found on the frequently asked questions guides. Um, if you just go to the subreddit and you look for this, that has most of the questions they'll probably ask. What's the BMATs? What are the best resources? Should I use this book? Um, how do I prepare for this section? Um, you know, should I get this course? All these questions have been answered on this frequently asked questions guides. So I recommend you check it out as well. Okay, so what will you get away with? So great question. So you'll get away with concise information. So. I've done the research, you don't, you don't have to do it, essentially. You, you, you know, most applicants, they have to do their research, they have to do papers, they have to figure out you know, how to do, how to get good marks, they have to ask teachers, they have to go to courses, they have to do this and that. It's a whole messy process. And I feel, like, I feel like it should be much more organized, but it isn't. So, you know, you have to play the game. Um, so because of this, 
I just did the research so that students can just prepare on the test themselves. So um, also I will answer any questions you have. If I haven't answered them by the end, so you know, today you can always email the team as well. We can contact us on WhatsApp because I do check WhatsApp quite frequently. So yeah, you can just ping me and just be like, hey Martin, can you help me out? I'll be like, sure. As long as I'm not busy, university has started now. So it's it's a bit more complicated now, but yeah. Um, question walk results. So we'll be going over as many questions as possible within time frame. I guess I won't really write a, a literal essay because there's no time for that, but I will try to go over an essay. If I can't, I'll show you where it is so you can read it in your own time. How does it sound, guys? So yeah, I will be, I'll try to write one if there's time, if there isn't, then I'll just show you the written one that I wrote for another webinar, Boxford. So, cool stuff. Yeah, so essay writing. Do not worry if you have not taken any essay subjects at the interval. One of the most common questions I get from students is, Martin, I haven't done, you know, English or history or philosophy, or, you know. Martin, I took Latin or ancient Greek. Is that helpful? Martin, I, I only took bio because, you know, I didn't want to do essays. You know, let's be honest, most of you are in the category of I picked maths and sciences and maybe psychology or, you know, another subject just for the laws. So you, could, you would never have to do an English essay ever again. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. There's going to be the, the one exception watch, but uh, most of you should fit in this category of I picked, you know, sciences, so I would never have to write an essay ever again. Chats, let's go, let's go. More, more energy, let's go. Yes or no? See you guys. Don't worry, guys. If you look at my subject stuff for A-level, let's go back for a quick sec. Three sciences, two maps, languages. I do that to you as well. <laughs> we, we've, we've all been there, guys. Trust me, we've all been there. We've all been there. But, you know, engineering and science, come on. But yeah, so most of you have picked um, science subjects. Some of you might have picked an essay subject. Oh, interesting. Yeah, even physics is amazing, come on. It's a great subject. But yeah, so this is just some info bomb before we just go with everything, but it's a two-hour test, yeah, three sections. You should know this by now, hopefully. Um, three sections, so section one is more like logic, critical thinking. Section two is free science and maths. Section three is essay writing. Uh, you can find all this info on the website. The registrations have closed. The test date is on the 18th of October, which is quite literally nine days away, if my maths is good. Those three apps have closed. UCAS deadline is just around the corner and you'll get results on the 25th of November, 2022 at 9 a.m. So yeah, and you get shortlisted in these two days. So you can get shortlisted before you'll be met for Oxbridge, mostly Cambridge. Oxford doesn't do this as often, but yeah. So uh, my section three table is being weighted because I can see on my iPad, but I can't see on the screen, which is very unusual. There should be a box here. Uh, interesting. Okay, okay, so section three, essay. And it's 30 minutes, and you have a choice of three questions, but you must only answer one. Not only answer one, so do bear that in mind. So you have a choice of, so on this next slide, oops. Okay, so. Philosophical, let's see. I can never spell philosophical. Let's see. Philosophy. There we go. Um, you have ethics and you have science. So, yeah, you have these um, options. However, do bear in mind that. You don't have to pick, you know, the hardest option just because, just because you want to. 
pick the one that you've answered best because then you'll do well. You'll not get more marks just because you essentially, you pick the harder question. In fact, they'll probably affect your marks. My advice to you is do not lie as well. Do not lie, do not make info up. Do not use false stats because you'll get marked down for this. Your test can even get canceled for this. So be very careful with this as well. Uh, so yeah, um, you know what the biggest area of students, so not doing your research. So students don't really understand the topic and then they don't know many examples of this. And then they'll just make something up which can get your test canceled as I said, or at least get you a lower score because lying is not really um, accepted in academia, as you know. It's same as plagiarism. You shouldn't copy, you shouldn't mix stuff up. Um, and remember, section three is an academic essay, so you should not do these things as well. Do not make data up. Bad time management. So most students, they plan too much or they just try to write too much and then they run out of time. Then the conclusion is really bad, bad school, sometimes below freeze and lack of planning. So students, what they do is just start writing straight away. You, you, you guys know that students, like um, in the first day of school, the, the, the teacher says hi and then people start writing loads and you're just like, what are they writing? Yeah, so do not be that person either. When they say start, don't just write the essay because very cliche. However, failing to plan is planning to fail. But yeah, so let's summarize section three. So these are the question types, philosophy, dilemmas and science, and graphics. So do I recommend something for further reading? I would say that we don't have to, and I'll be honest with you guys. I got five year score without mentioning one example from you know medical cases. And you might be thinking, how is that possible? Right? How do you get a five A without you know those examples that you see online? You know, for example, Gillick's competence or the medical ethics pillars in you know, all that stuff. How do you get such a high score without using those? Right? Or no? Guys, more energy. We have 107 people here. Let's go. Let's go. More energy. More energy. Let's go. Show your enthusiasm today. I'm sure you're all loving essays. Great. So, um, this is my advice for you. Treat section three as if it's section one. And you might be thinking, Marsam, what the hell are you on about? Right? But, but when, when you think about it, it makes loads of sense. Because think about, so do you guys know much about the critical, things, critical thinking questions? So have you done them before? Yeah. Also, just so I can have a simple background here, have you guys been to any courses? So for example, I know that some schools, they organize courses for you. Some schools, they, um, you know, some of you might have done some, you know, programs, who knows, there's loads of, so have you done MVP at prep? For example, tutoring, zero gravity, something trust, you know, all those, any companies. I'm just trying to get like a rough background. So have you read any books, any courses? I'm just trying to see like where you are. If you have, can you just let us know what you've done? I'm quite curious. So I want to just add something. So for those of the BMAT stuff, BMAT courses, some people use like this. Okay, those using BMAT Ninja. Mm-hmm. Okay, so most of you aren't major, most of you. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Oh, PMT tutors, that is a banger. That's a banger as well. I used, I actually helped out to, you know, improve those resources. Just fun fact, but okay. So, um, for those who did BMAT prep. Um, for section three. So do you remember um, them talking about premises and conclusions? So there would be something like, Plato is a man. Careful, you can never say this in the 21st century. People might be angry at you in university. 
不要命了，不要命了。呃 ，old man， I'm also。Therefore, Plato is a mortal. So, can you guys see how this follows quite nicely? Unless you use Twitter, then this whole thing here might actually get me fired from my job in twenty years. But you know,、um, that that being said,、uh, can we all agree that there is some logic here? You know, it follows quite nicely.、Um, so. A is B, B is C. Therefore, A is C. So yeah,、um, as you guys can see here, this is logic one on one. So these are called premises. So the premise is a statement that is a conclusion. So, conclusion. Okay. So, can you all agree that this is how section one questions are usually structured? Apart from you know some question types, they might be a bit weird, but I'm、um, talking about like, the the normal ones. You know, they would usually have this kind of structure. And do they really use any examples? Like, have you ever seen a question talking about you know the pillar of ethics, or you know, ethics competence, or something around those lines? I don't know what they've been teaching nowadays to you guys, but something along those lines. Have you seen a question doing that before? They were trying to use those individual concepts because remember, those concepts are used for interviews. You should not be using them in your remands. They will not make your essay a lot stronger. In fact, I would say it will hurt your essay if you do this. Remember, guys, because people say, "Oh yeah, you know, BMAT prep is so easy. Just revise for interviews, mate. It's going to be so good." And I'm just like, "No, it's not," because there is a reason for this. How many times? You, okay, so how many times do you think people will mention this in the essay? Like, if I was a marker, how many times do you think I will see someone talking about the exact same topic and the exact same example for medical ethics? They'll probably put a case from medic, any of the medic companies or something. Yes. So also. If you've done some logic studies, you might know about one logical flaw, which is called appealing to authority. So, have you guys heard of this flaw before? If you've done philosophy, you probably know about this. Or physical has an honors program. I know that House has one. So, for the House person here, I know it has that. So, you've probably done it in the honors program. Uh, that being said, have you guys came across came across this flaw before, which is called appealing to authority, yai or nai? Yeah, so move your hands. It's fine. So let me just introduce you to what this is. So essentially, what do you guys think feel like it sounds like? So I'm appealing to authority. What do you guys think? What do you guys think that means exactly? What am I doing? Like, why is this bad? You know, that's it. Yes, exactly. So you risk doing this in your tests, and you think that so section three is testing your logic. It's not testing your essay writing skills. So section three, let me just get rid of this. Get out of here. Get out of here. There you go. Perfect. Free space. It's convenient. So, what is section three actually testing? It's testing your ability to organize your thoughts clearly. And also, it's testing a. Your logical thinking, logical slash lateral thinking. You know, is is the essay sound essentially? So when I say that you should treat section three like section one, this is what I meant. You should organize your thoughts clearly. 
think of it as, you know, in section one, you have this entry, you have to find the conclusion, or you have to find an assumption of full web uh, for a question. In section three, you are the one writing that the passage. So in section one, you read the passage and then you pick what's wrong and what's right, what's the conclusion, what's the flaw, how it strengthens, how it weakens it. And you use those concepts in section three. Essentially like a reverse critical thinking is what I call section three. And that's when I got a really high school. So if there's something you, you take from today is this, this is how you get a 5A in section three. To get a nine in section two, you know, there is a lot more to it, a lot more. But yeah, um, that being said, there is also a 5A example essay. So if you go on YouTube and put Ace for VMAT, Biomedical Admissions Test, Martin Barrett, X Octave Webinar, this is a webinar that I've made with Jesus College. So this is the official University of Oxford's Jesus College music channel. And I've made a webinar with Dr. Matthew Williams. We've made some sort of partnership. So yeah, if you want to see Dr. Matthew Williams reviewing my essay, then that's the video for you. I strongly suggest you read it. Let's look at the five scoring those. We test an excellent answer with no significant weaknesses. Doesn't that sound like a lot like critical thinking? Which one of the following weakens the statement? Yes, it does, if you've read it. All aspects of the question are addressed. Again, that's obvious. I can't really zoom in on this one, I think. Well, I can, never mind. Good. So this is a screenshot. So this is probably my fault, but as you can see, it says, an excellent answer with, with no significant weaknesses. So in critical thinking, you might notice that which of the following weakens the final statements. So you must find ways to you know, get rid of those. All aspects of the question are addressed, making excellent use of the material and generating an excellent counter preposition proposition or argument. So as you can see here, it's all about being able to find the point against. The argument is cogent. So it means that you know it's very, it's very logical, it thoughts really well. You've made great use of material. You're not just you're not just appealing to authority by using other examples. What you're doing is you are thinking about it a lot in a more logical way. So source, I've made it up, is what you should be going for. Don't make the information up though, but um, your source shouldn't be, you know, an example from the written in the internet. So for example, in science, there are no universal truths, just views of the world that have yet to be shown to be false. Right, when I read this question, I'd be like, okay, so what is a universal truth? Um, who's, who actually decides what it is? Um, you know, is it a bad thing if they, if they, if they are false eventually? These are the things you have to think about. So yeah, there's a lot more to it. I could honestly be here with you guys for hours. Like um, I've been teaching some students BMAT stuff and I've been teaching them for about 70 hours now or even more, I would say 80, 80 hours, a group of students. So I could be talking about this for the whole day, which we don't have time for. So uh, why is doing well and being that important? Well, because look at the number of applicants. This year, the number of applicants was about 29,000. We had about 6,000 reapplicants and 23,000 first-time applicants. This is the problem because, you know, people aren't just doing more, you know, like you're competing for people who have already done the test. Like you are starting from ground zero, whereas someone else, is already did that, and now they have a lot more experience. They don't have to worry about A levels, they don't have to worry about prediction, they don't have to worry about UCAS. So it's very important that you focus on BMAT because you will make or break your application. It's an opportunity. Show that you deserve that place. What are my final thoughts? Well, look after yourself. You know, don't just overwork yourself 24 7. Take care of your body through exercise and a good diet because. If you've eaten really badly and you have like a really bad diet during testing, you'll just be doing a lot, 
a lot less. It won't be sufficient. You won't be so well. Make sure you get that good night of sleep before the test. Your brain is an organ that requires a lot of energy. Make sure it has a lot of it during the exam. Check your resources because some resources are written by people who are not qualified. Do you ever put the start and say that I'm an education consultant, the tutor? So tutors are usually students at university who got good scores, as you know. However, my question to you is, so what do you guys get in English language, GCSE? Can you just plug your grades in the chat? Okay, so you got nine, good stuff. Eights or sevens, good stuff. Okay, do you guys think they could go to a classroom or like tutor someone to get their grades? Do you think you're qualified? Are you able to get students the exact same grades? Like, would you just tutor your siblings or your cousins? Why? Because you know that you don't have the qualification for this. Most of you said no. Some of you might, it's fair enough, but most won't. And there's a point here. Why would you trust someone who just got a high score? How would you, why would you trust someone that got in? Just because they got in and they got a good score does not mean that they can help to get in. And this is what's wrong with most of you know, the industry, is that students, they, uh, they think that they're getting something good out of it, or is in reality, no. Just because someone's a doctor doesn't mean they're, they're more qualified. If anything, I would argue that they're less qualified because they've already been through the process about 10 years ago. Like, what do they know about the whole process now? Unless they are actively engaged with students, they will not know much about it. So remember, don't be impressed by medical students, doctors, Oxbridge. You know, don't be impressed by all of that. Don't be impressed by high schools. Be impressed by, okay, so does this person have references? Is this person, you know, can this person teach? Is this person enjoyable? So yeah, it's something to bear in mind as well. So yeah, check your resources because it doesn't matter who wrote it, what matters is the content for this. And finally, let me know how it goes because I hope that you'll be out really good as well. Like, I really do, guys. So uh, please let me know how it goes eventually. I would love to hear from you guys. So good luck, and I'm proud of you for working so hard. And what resources you might want to use, again, just the, the usual, you can use my YouTube channel, uh, forward slash email exam, Visit the last surgery, you can watch them again. Six minutes social media, so what's that group? There's called the main pages. You can get some books, the Map Ninja or the Master Classes, courses, tuition, and the art bundles, and some reviews here. So can you have some questions here? And I'll see if I can find the essay because I think we have some time. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I'll go over the essay. We have about 20 minutes, so that should be enough. So let me just find the essay. In the meantime, ask your questions. There you go. That should be it. Okay, I found it. Choosing the ethics question is not always the easiest option. For example, I find the philosophy questions a lot easier but that's because I know what I'm doing. I would say that if you don't know what you're doing, medical ethics is the easiest one. But the problem is it's really, really hard to get a good score for medical ethics because making a good argument, like a five-way argument is difficult, proper difficult. So, you know, just bear that in mind that Medical ethics is like, it has a very really high ceiling. No, it has a very really high floor, but it has a very low ceiling. So getting threes is not that hard, but getting fours and even five is very hard with that question type. So it's like the safe option, I would say. All this the contrary means you essentially provide the point for and against. I do have one essay here, which you're about to see. Okay. So can you guys see my screen here? This is my essay that I wrote. This is marked by you know a few admission students at Fox and they like it. So I thought, I feel like this is as reliable as it gets. I'm not trying to build authority, but 
I would say it's a very reliable source if you know professors are marking it. Because guess what? They mark essays day in and day out at university. Okay. So um in science, there are no universal truths, just views of the world that have yet to be shown to be false. Explain what you think is meant by the statement. Okay, I'll be honest. What I have done here is I've explained the statement, I provide a point for and against, and I provide a conclusion. That is the, the general structure for a free day. The reason why my essay is scored so highly is because of the way it's worded and even for example, um, in some cases, it is practical to accept truths to build upon principles that describe the physical world. Reasonable. These are basic rules that are essential to understand the world foremost, but then to manipulate them to build technologies. For example, it was widely accepted that electrons moved from the positive to the negative terminal, conventional current. This basic concept was developed to provide electricity we have today. So despite the fact that we're showing that electrons travel from negative to positive terminal, if you had not initially accepted conventional current as truth, there would be no foundation to build an understanding on, which is the scientific progress. So as you guys can see here, I haven't really just said, you know, this is the example. I've tried to use examples a way to, like, it's not really okay, um, a textbook example that makes sense. There is actually a lot more analysis that comes into it. So, the way I go about it is, if you're using quotes or examples or someone else's opinion, you better make it work because they want to know what you think and you know, what someone else thinks. But yeah, so that is the essay when I want to not gel. There is a whole webinar on this if you really want to read it properly. But that is all about that is all about it for today. Oh, I just added that as further reading. Okay, Q and A time now. Q and A. Yes, there is a way to access the recordings. I'll put it. Over here. You don't need quotes in it. I, it took me about, I'd say, about two weeks to prepare for section three. But my prep was very efficient. I knew what to do. I was, I'd say most students don't have a clue, which is a shame. How long should you spend planning? I would say they should spend about, um, well, Hmm. I would say about five minutes, which is a good time. And you have about 20 minutes to 25 minutes to do your essay. Um, what do you want to know about NUS and NTU? I've applied to NUS and an NTU user. So this is one from Singapore. And these are the ones from Hong Kong as well. And there was also, you know, the classic Oxbridge and you know the American universities. Uh, okay, if you have any questions about NUS or HCUHK, ask away as well. And then for, you know, the UK was Oxbridge. Imperial. UCL. And Cardiff.
these are some of the ones from the US as well. So yeah, I had a very busy application. Um, well, it was more like a busy application um, cycle. I would not recommend this. VMAT requirements for NTU. I would say mid fives. It's a good. So for NTU, it was mid fives. However, that is like the, the low range. If you want to get into NTU, if I'm being honest, let me just type here. So NTU. I believe I can't remember the marks on top of my head, but I feel like the bottom 10% had 5.7 for interviews and top 90%. No, yeah, the um, let's see, bottom 10% had 5.7, and then the top 10% had a 7.2 or something like this. The average was like some mid six, it was about 6.2. I can't recall the exact data. I have a one after, but um, this is what you'd be looking for for NT for the BMAT. Uh, I actually applied during a gap year because I couldn't be bothered. I wanted to just take a year out. That was literally it. BMAT requirements for leads industry, low sixes, high fives is what I'd recommend because there is, so leads dentistry they have 1,000 apps for 80 places, give or take. So, I would advise to get something like 5.8, 6.2 or above in section one and section two, in the three A in session three. That's advisable. Uh, Cambridge depends. Are you an international or home student? So, you want 6.6, 6.6. 3.5 or 3A. I would say that this would be your average of a holder. It varies a bit each year, but that is a good average to have. Obviously, it can be lower, it can be a bit higher for others. This also includes international students. Yeah, international is going to be like a 6.6 .6 or something, give or take. Should be about 6.6. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and here in this yellow is going to be like a little 6 as well. Yeah, so Brighton. VSMS is section one oops, plus two times section two plus three letter plus second number. Letter is A equals five, A equals one. Yeah, in section three, you can only write one A4 side. Yeah, five paragraphs is recommended for section three. Yes, yeah, someone did mine. I picked the philosophy question. 
Yeah, the philosophy. No, not really. Like with, with, with the philosophy questions, you just have to talk about philosophy. You don't really have to talk about anything else. Because when I did mine, I remember I was talking about the... I was, I was literally talking about physics in mind. So it's not really needed, is it? It was literally just noted philosophy. Honestly, you can use anything if you can argue well. I actually used Hippocrates as well. In mine, I talk about Hippocrates, I talked about Newton, and I talk about other examples. So I talked about Mills, Hans principle. Um, there was loads of interesting things out there. So there's one really good legal topic, which is the Teesside Health Board against McFarlane for wrongful conception and also there's wrongful life. So all those concepts are very interesting to talk about because they are quite niche and they usually give the top marks for section three because you know they're a bit more abstract. And if you can argue an abstract concept well, that's that shows a good level of thinking. So yeah. Um, just to do ones that you really like for section three. Okay, so honestly, you can get a good score of simple wording. I just like to include some simple words, like some high level words, just so it sounds better. Like it sounds a bit more sophisticated if you can use some high level words. Does that make sense? Okay. I don't feel like quotes are useful for medical ethics. I don't like quotes. What right in school? I would say low fives. Who? How to this competitive school? Would that. Um, well, yeah, you don't really remain partial or impartial with this question. You have to think about both sides of the arguments. You can't just, you know, use one of them. You have to think about both sides. That's literally the whole point of section three. You don't have to use kind of a verb, but it helps. It just helps in this because it sounds more sophisticated. I would say one point is fine, but I would say two is a bit better because if that one point is weak, then you know you shot yourself in the foot. So I usually like to include two examples just in case if one of them is not that strong. Because if you rely your whole argument on one point, then it can be taken down a lot, a lot easier. I think.
Yeah, so there's a question here about, uh, yeah, so this is, there is this question about philosophical questions on how to prepare what to read in any fast track. So you just should work in your logic, not the knowledge. Because remember guys, this is a logic test, not a knowledge test. What score will you need for Oxford? I would say if you get 3A, that should be fine. Imperial, as you can see here, here you go. These are those Imperial and UCL scores that I advised. These are like the safe scores in sense. For cutoffs, it's a bit lower, but you don't want to be in that scary zone. Yeah, so I have tips on how to do well in section one. What I'm happy to give is on the webinar and also in previous segment talks. So if you want to know what my stance is on section one, check out the Oxford webinar on the BNATs along with um, previous segment surgeries. Okay, so all these questions are talk about structure as well. I'll talk about them later. Um, Okay. Score structure. Okay. Lead medicine, I would say is the same score kind of. So you want like 5.8, 5.8, 3A for leads, for home students. That's advisable. TSA papers for section one. Absolutely. I love them. Um, average scores for CAMBs, so internationals. There is not like a specific average, but I would recommend getting a 7, 7, 3.58 or above for Oxbridge as an international. You have a lot, your chance will be a lot stronger if you have this score. So you can also have something like, you know, 6, 8, 3.5 or something. There's not. Uh, that's strict. I would say if your score adds up to 14 or above, then you're, you're, you're quite good to go for as in traffic students. So make sure you get 14 on section one plus two. It's a good it's a it's a good position to be in for the answer with you. Uh the higher the better though. The higher the better. Uh it counteracts to an extent, but not as much as you think. I would, however, that being said, I would say I would argue that. It's better to be like, it's better to be good at, um, it's better to be good at section two than section one, because if you're, if you're weak at section two, then you'll be doing a lot worse at interviews. Because, you know, if you have, oh, by the way, guys, I'm not sure if you need this, but they can see your individual scores in the BMAT section two. So for example, if you have, let's say an A prediction in chemistry, and you do badly in chemistry in the BMATs, then you're in trouble because chemistry is a very important subject in the BMAT. So it's those things that um, do count as well. For example, if you have a, it's not as black as, and white as you'd think, but yeah, they can see your individual scores for section one and section two. So how many questions you got wrong for physics, what about chemistry, what about maths, what about biology? And all those things will be used um, depending on the university as well, the college, but they take those into account when picking offers, essentially. But yeah, uh, what happened to get a nine in section two? Good question. Um, I can't give you everything for a couple of reasons. So first reason is, is that I have 28 students this year that I'm working with probably, and they will not be too happy with me if I just spoiled, you know, all the lessons that I gave them. Uh, so what I can say is, I worked on strategies. I thought about ways to move myself faster than the average applicant. So section two, um, I'm not sure if you guys know much about section two, but okay, that's interesting. Yeah, for section two, Essentially, I um, I did section two in twenty minutes. 
Yes. So, you know, that section two, the time pressure one, I, I had 10 minutes left when I was doing that paper. Yes, 100%. It could be that compensate for not getting good GCSEs, 100%. And I know one student myself, he got three A stars at GCSE and he got into Oxford. If you don't believe me, check this out on FOI requests. And you might be asking, how did he do it? Well, he had an eight, eight, Oh, was it 3.5 or 4? It was something like this. It was like 3.5. This was his BMAT score. And they overlook his GCSEs. So yes, it really counts. People underestimate how much a good BMAT can help you. I would say that reading doesn't really help because it's not about, you know, it's not about what you know, it's about how you think. It's all about your skills you've built until now. And finally, to complete this, structure. I can't give you my own structure because my students will not be happy, but I'll give you the generic one. So intro, point four, oops, okay. So intro, so points four, points against, And finally, we have, you know, the conclusion. As you can see, my essay was a lot more detailed than this. There is a much better way to go about this, but this is how everyone else does it. Um, so yeah, I hope it helps. Two points, I recommend. But yeah. I'll be honest with you guys. Books are not good, and I'll tell you why. Do you remember how I was telling you that most people writing them are not qualified? Just because they have a good score doesn't mean that they're qualified. One thing is being able to, you know, to get a good score in the exam, which is a good first, it's a good start. But what you have to bear in mind is most people, they can't teach you how to get there, which is why I'm very skeptical about books, because I know that, like, from my students' experiences, they found books and even most courses useless because their scores were not improving. They essentially they stole their progress. So yeah, and that should end on that note. But yeah, guys, so I hope that makes sense. I am literally done for today. I hope that answered all your questions. Any questions you want to ask before we go, guys. This is the final surgery. I can just say it's a big pleasure to talk to all of you. And I wish you the best of luck in the BMATs. Please let me know how it goes. Right, any final questions? I'll leave the links again on the WhatsApp group. And I'll put it on the chat. And finally, the... Um, Where's the WhatsApp group set? There you go. If you want to join here. Okay, amazing question. If there is one main thing to take away from this session, what would it be? That is an amazing question. I would say that approach, no, there's something better. If we think your approach to BMAT, it's still not too late to so improve your score. I have seen students improving a whole score in one week. It's possible, guys. Rethink your approach. Try to think of ways which are more efficient, which are more effective. Don't go on you know, doing thousands of papers. Think about question and think, is there a better way to do this? That is how I got my score, which is pretty much a seven, 6.87, I would say. So it sounds better. Um, nine and five A. So seven, nine, five A, or 6.8 if you want to be technical, but it's pretty much a seven. <laughs> So that's how I got seven, right, five there, guys. Okay, so. Okay.
Okay, that should be all then, I guess. If you get an interview at Oxford, does your BMAT no longer count to, for getting accepted? It does. It really does, guys. So, um, they might have changes, but from what I remember, and I was talking to the admissions team about this, they look at your BMATs after interviews. So, your interviews do not know your BMAT score, usually. Sometimes they do, but as a good rule of thumb, they don't. Because that can, you know, count the judgment. So they will look at your BMAT score after. So they'll interview you. They'll say, "I want this person, maybe or rejected." And then once they do that, they get they can see your BMAT score after they greet you, and they'll say, "Okay, so I give this person this is like the interview score this person got, and this was their BMAT. Do I want to admit them or do I want to reject them?" So. The BMAT plus interview score um, can be used. Also, they can sometimes use references if they really want to double check, but um, everything is used. But the biggest factors are interviews and BMAT. It does, it, it means, okay, so the BMAT is used for interviews and offers. So, yeah, it's, so your BMAT essentially affects your interview chances and your offer holder chances, essentially. Honestly, they're both the same thing. You know, the way that I like describing Imperial and UCL is, you know, um, Imperial is fries with ketchup and UCL is ketchup with fries. It's the exact same thing, guys. The difference is that Imperial is much more STEM as university, whereas UCL is much more diverse. Um, so, you guys recommendations. So you essentially ask your school to upload them. So if you're applying for your school, then they will be the ones submitting it. Right. Um, time's up, guys. I would like to say thank you for everything, and please let me know how you think that goes. And good luck. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.